I was a young lad growing up in the suburbs of Philadelphia, I managed to watch a VHS of Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. I remember the intro scene pretty well, where Mel Gibson pulls that knob to kick on the supercharger, and the interceptor does that crazy axle hop stop. There was something about an ordinary car, decked out for war and racing through the desert, that really captured my young imagination at the time. Over the years, I became interested in all sorts of cars and motorcycles. But in the back of my mind, I still always wanted to build an end of the world Mad Max pursuit vehicle. In 2019, I was living in Oregon, and I really started paying attention to the Gambler 500. Here's a bunch of individuals who share that same strange desire to take an ordinary vehicle, modify it, and put it through hell for a couple weekends out of the year. <laughs> There's some absolutely incredible and unique builds at these rallies, and watching other people take the steps to build their dream machines really gave me the courage to take on a project of my own. When deciding what type of car to build into an apocalypse mobile, I knew I was going to exceed the $500 budget of the Gambler. I wanted a strong, well-maintained, and comfortable car that could be reliably used for overlanding again and again. Something I could take camping, skiing, and use for hauling, in addition to going to a few off-road rally events every year. Like so many before me, I settled on the Ford Panther platform. The internet is littered with lifted and modified Crown Vicks, Grand Marquis, and Town Cars. They're still relatively cheap and plentiful. Parts are easy to find, and they're fairly easy to work on. So if you're an amateur mechanic like myself, with an urge to turn wrenches but not a lot of experience or resources, there's already abundant documentation to guide you on your quest for glory. To prepare for my lifted Panther build, I studied the online posts and videos of Old Car Guy, Generation High Output, James and Mo Vlogs, whoever built the awesome red hot car with the shark paint, and of course the Frankenvic, which I think is one of the best lifted Panther builds out there, and whose suspension photos I studied in great detail. Of all the Panther bodies, I'd already settled on using the P71 Crown Victoria. A lifted town car is pretty cool, but a lifted cop car is so much cooler. I can't think of a car that satisfies my fantasy of being on the main force patrol more than a retired V8 Interceptor. The donor car itself was a beige 2004 that I bought from a dealer in Montana. I was told it was used by the Kalispell Police Department. It has a working stakeout light and some non-working red and blue bulbs in the headlights to identify it as a former police car. The back of the seats are stab proof and it's rumored there is Kevlar in the doors, though I've never checked. There was this disconnected computer in the trunk. Does anyone know what this thing is? If you do, let me know in the comments. When I first got the car, the engine ran a little rough. So I changed the spark plugs and wires and used a little cleaner on the mass airflow sensor. That seemed to make a big difference, and the engine has run great ever since. I recommend doing that as part of the tune-up the minute you buy one of these older Panthers. For a while, I kept the car as it was, added a hitch receiver, and actually used the car to move furniture with a motorcycle trailer a few times, which it did fairly well. Even with bad tires, it pulled 2,000 pounds through an I-80 snowstorm in Wyoming. But the stock shocks were not meant for that much weight in the rear, and it rode very low to the ground in the back. In the summer of 2021, I finally had the time and money to do a lift on the car, and my good friend Lance, who's a professional mechanic and all-around great dude, was able to come out to Colorado and basically teach me how the pros do it. It's kind of ghetto, but sometimes you gotta piss with the cock I gave you, Eric. I purchased the 5 inch lift kit from Universal Car Lifts for $1,800, which included having all the bushings and ball joints pre installed. It's basically spacers front and rear, extended control arms on the front, extended upper and lower rear trailing arms, extended rear shocks, as well as panhard bars to replace the stock Watts linkage. Someone with better fabricating skills than I could probably put this kit together for a lot cheaper. But as an amateur, I just wanted the install to be as easy as possible. Here are the issues I ran into installing this kit. The extended forward control arms are necessary to get the front steering into proper alignment once the car is lifted, but they are designed for 20 inch minimum wheels. In order to fit a smaller wheel, we had to run one inch hub centric spacers as well as carefully cut steel out of the forward control arm with a grinder. It works. And the control arm clears the rim by at least one eighth of an inch. When installing the front spacers on top of the springs, we found that the bolts provided with the kit were too short to go through the mounting points on the body. 
but we were able to easily source longer bolts from the local Ace hardware. I also ended up replacing the left tie rod as it was just too rusted to disassemble. In the rear, as old car guy mentioned in his video, the new shocks will be missing the spacers found on the stock Crown Vic shocks. We easily fix this issue by filling in the gaps with washers. Also, after the lift, the anti-sway bar connectors won't be long enough. I just extended them using some off thread with U-bolts and it seems to be working pretty well. My major issue with the lift install in the rear is that the spacer cups are intended to be installed with a slight gap on the back and then welded into place. This allows for proper alignment of the drive shaft. I thought this was a weird design choice, but Universal Car Lifts was pretty helpful explaining things through email. We didn't have a welder, so we just put the spacers flush on the axle without welds. As a result, the rear springs kind of sit funny, but the car seems to handle fine and the spacers haven't shown signs of shifting in a couple thousand miles of driving. If I ever get around to upgrading the rear axle, I'll make sure to reinstall the spacer cups as intended. For wheels, my original intention was to use regular 17-inch Crown Victoria steel rims, as I really like the utilitarian look I've seen on some other builds, but we quickly realized that these stock rims would not fit over the extended control arms. In the end, due to time constraints, I ended up just going to four-wheel parts in Denver and buying five of the cheapest rims they could get for the 5 on 4.5-inch bolt pattern which ended up being 18-inch OE Creations model PR178s with a 30mm offset. The tires are 31-inch BF Goodriches, and I think they look absolutely badass on the car. Very happy with how it turned out. After the lift and tire install was complete, I knew I would have to start trimming body panels to fit the larger tires. I basically just took the car for a test drive, marked where the wheels were rubbing with a sharpie, and started trimming steel off the panels with my angle grinder and Dremel. It took three or four passes to finally get it right. <laughs> In the front of the car, I've lost about the last 5% of steering on either side. If you turn hard over, you'll end up rubbing the tires on the frame, but as long as you're aware of that, it rarely happens, and you still have plenty of steering left on and off-road. I think going with 1 inch smaller tires on the front would completely eliminate this problem. In the rear, I've completely eliminated any rubbing except on the most extreme, high-speed, highway bumps. But even then, it is barely noticeable. I did have to cut out a few inches of the trunk for clearance, but I made some sheet metal covers that I riveted in place to prevent dust and moisture entering the trunk. The most important upgrade I can recommend for anyone who is attempting to modify an old Panther would be to get the engine tuned. It absolutely changes the car. I highly recommend contacting Marty at Moe's Speed Shop in Georgia. They're pretty much famous on the Crown Vic forums. I'll put a link to their site in the description. Marty was very friendly. I told him about my project, which he didn't think was strange at all, paid online, and they sent me a brand new SCT X4 programmer with custom tunes optimized for my Crown Vic already loaded on it. Plug it into the OBD2 port and push some buttons and it reprograms the computer in a few seconds. Before tuning, the car felt very sluggish, as if it was dragging around concrete boots with those big tires on. And of course the speedometer was inaccurate. After tuning the car, it fixed the gauges, added more power, and changed the shift points. Felt like a completely different car. Almost like it came from the factory with those big tires in mind. I've been driving the car with the lift and the tune for over a year now. It's still very comfortable as a daily driving sedan. On long trips, I almost forget I'm driving a modified vehicle at all. In fact, I'd argue that I like driving it a lot better than the stock Crown Vic. It rides as high as a mid-sized truck now and has plenty of pickup. I use it to take the dogs to the dog park so we don't get our daily drivers dirty and to launch our little day sailor at the nearby reservoir. I should note that since I started editing this video, the car developed a serious transmission leak due to the stock aluminum drive shaft being too short. If you're serious about lifting an older Panther, be prepared to invest in a new drive line. Also, since I found out you don't legally need a muffler in Denver, I went ahead and scrapped the old rusty exhaust system in exchange for some sweet side pipes. Well, thanks for checking out my video. If you're like me, a complete amateur, and you've been thinking about building a car like this yourself, I say just go for it. There's plenty of resources online to guide you, and you'll learn a ton about working on cars along the way. I'm happy to answer any questions about my build that I haven't already covered. Thanks again, and hope to see some of you folks at a Gambler next summer.